Hey everyone, thanks for showing up. Uh, I'm Gordon Half. I'm at Red Hat. I wrote a book on open source last year, and one of the cool things about writing that book was I got to read a whole bunch of research, and this talk comes out of that. Why do we contribute to open source? Now, we, I mean the individual we. I mean, there's a whole other discussion about why companies contribute, but this is about why we individually contribute. And it really comes down to motivations. And there are several different kinds of motivations, extrinsic, intrinsic, and that big, long pair of words. Uh, so I might go through each of those. Extrinsic. Well, this is a pretty obvious extrinsic motivator here. And this is probably the best known one. The, uh, the, sort of the, the idea here comes out of psychology as something called drive reduction theory. Academics are great at coming up with bizarre terminology for things. It goes back to about the 1940s or so. Money is a big one. Um, drive, uh, drive reduction theory is this sort of idea. You, know, is you get out of balance because you're hungry, so you eat something. And that gets you back in balance. And money is kind of an indirect proxy here but it's an example of the way that you can kind of get back into um, balance. Uh, but other things are like career advantages, so uh, getting raises, getting promotions are examples here. And the contributing open source plays in here because there's actually have been studies that have said that developers can signal their talent through open source software on open repositories. But this obviously doesn't explain every type of motivation out there. There's also intrinsic. And this evolved from some other psychological theories, uh, self-determination theory specifically. And the most obvious is just fun. You know, I like doing this. You're probably not playing in your, say, your softball league after work be for career advancement, certainly not for money, but because you just like doing it. Another big intrinsic motivator is altruism. You know, why might someone, say, help out at a soup kitchen? They're doing it to help other people. And OK, maybe they're also doing it to feel good about helping other people. But at the end of the day, it's for altruistic reasons. Another thing that uh, psychologists, sociologists talk about is the idea of kinship amity. Essentially, it's an informal gift economy within a group. So you see this in families, for example. Why do you have grandma over for Thanksgiving dinner? Well, it's something you kind of are, have to do as sort of part of belonging to your family group. Um, the open source research here is a bit of a mixed bag. Um, Altruism seems to be more important when you have students and hobby programmers. Uh, for professionals, yeah, it can be a motivator, but they mostly have to be otherwise satisfied at the same time. And fun can also be a motivator, at least for tasks that developers enjoy. Finally, there's this idea of um, mixing sort of these different types of motivators, and this really falls into external motivations that don't have an explicit carrot and stick. So things like peer recognition, things like learning, although people mean different things by that, are simply scratching your own itch. It's something that's sort of helping yourself in some way. So what does this mean for us? Um, well, don't expect those non-extrinsic motivators to carry too much of the load. Don't expect people to work for free just because it's open source without paying them or other types of relatively formal recognition. Um, amplify some of those non-extrinsic motivators. So help people learn. Uh, for example, the editors at opensource.com. Now that. Uh, peer reputation. Uh, Red Hat, we have a peer recognition system, reputation system, and recognition system where people can give awards to their coworkers. And finally, motivators can be counterproductive if you over rotate on them effectively. So, scratching your own itch, but just for, maybe 
once they've done what they want to do, um, they're not going to help you. So don't, uh, don't over-rotate on that. So with that, thank you. This is, um, uh, this is some research that I used, um, and these will be published, uh, that you can refer to for the source of some of this uh, information.